Welcome. This is a course on animal learning and behavior for undergraduate students in psychology and biology. Before presenting the course, let me introduce myself. I am Stefano Ghirlanda, a professor of psychology at Brooklyn College and a guest professor at Stockholm University. I am an active researcher in the field of animal learning, which means I'm up to speed with current knowledge of animal learning. Sometimes I have my own ideas that may differ from what you hear from others or read in textbooks. In this course, I will do my best to highlight what is fact, what is the general interpretation of the fact, and what is my own interpretation. Psychology is a big field, and not everyone is interested in animal learning in itself. However, animal learning may be more interesting than you think. Humans are also animals, even if cognitively more complex. This means that we share with other species many behaviors and cognitive processes. In particular, we have a brain you cannot talk to, as I like to call it, that learns and decides, much like a rat or pigeon. We will learn a lot about this hidden brain in the coming lessons. Many of you will be most satisfied to learn about applications of animal learnings to human life and to the welfare of animals, such as pets and farm animals. To understand these applications, we need a solid foundation in empirical facts about learning. There are so many of these facts that it's easy to get lost. To help us, we will organize facts into theories. These theories will not be perfect, but will help us to understand many things about learning. Many useful applications of animal learning research make sense only if you know something about learning theory. So, what are these applications? We have a whole lesson on reasons why animal learning is interesting. Just to whet our appetite, these are some things that we have learned from studying animal learning. How to manage the side effects of cancer treatment, what causes drug tolerance and overdose, how to treat phobias, how we make choices, especially when we don't think too much, what faces we consider pretty, why we call the elevator again and again. There are also many applications to animal training and welfare. In this video, we see a zoo worker drawing blood from a hyena. What is most interesting to me is that the hyena is offering her jugular vein voluntarily to the worker. Before zoos started to train their animals for medical procedures, they had to put animals like hyenas or lions under general anesthesia. It used to take a whole team to make sure something as simple as a blood draw could be completed safely. If the animal is properly trained, however, a blood draw takes just a few minutes and is much less dangerous to the animal. Before we go on, it's useful to know that scientists have invented a lot of funny terms. For example, psychologists often say conditioning instead of learning. We need to know these terms because everyone uses them and because they have definitions that are more precise than everyday language. This table is here just to show you some technical terms that we will learn and their corresponding everyday meaning. We don't need to pay attention too much to it uh, right now. If you open a textbook on animal learning, you will find the terms on the left, but rarely those on the right. In this course, I will try to explain all terminology as clearly as possible. The structure of the course is somewhat loose. Lessons are arranged approximately in the order in which they should be taken, but there is some leeway. At the end of each lesson, there are some pointers for what to watch next. For example, after this lesson, you should watch how do I take the course, why study animal learning, and why do animals learn. This lesson is over. Happy learning to everyone.